Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's go take a look at all the number sets. It's good to understand what each of the number sets represents so when we read in the textbook we know what they're talking about. So what are the different number sets? First of all, the counting numbers. Those are the numbers starting with 1 and continue on 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to infinity like that. So they're just simply counting numbers starting with the number 1. Not counting numbers, sometimes it's better to understand what are not counting numbers, for example the number negative 3, the number 0, the fraction 1 half, the decimal 1.5, those are not counting numbers. It has to be a number like 1, 2, 3, 4, on, and nothing less than that. Whole numbers is equal to all the counting numbers with one additional number, the number 0. So the only difference between the counting numbers and the whole numbers is that the whole numbers also include the number 0. And then when we go to the integers, they include all of the whole numbers, notice from 0 on to the right, but also the negative equivalents, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, all the way to negative infinity. So all the numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity, one number at a time. The next set is what we call the rational numbers. Now, the way you can tell that you have a rational number is if you can write it in the form of a fraction. Any number that can be written as a over b, as long as a and b are integers, not equal to zero. The reason why they can't equal to zero is because you cannot divide by zero, that is an undefined number. So any number you can write as a over b. For example, 1.5 can be written as 3 halves, that's a fraction, therefore this is a rational number. Even the number 0.11111 out to infinity, this little line means that is 1's out to infinity, can be written as 1 over 9, so this is considered a rational number. 3.2 can be written as 32 over 10. Again, since it can be written in this form, it is considered to be a rational number. And finally, the irrational numbers. What are irrational numbers? Those are numbers that cannot be put into the form A over B. They are typically numbers with decimals that are not repeating and not terminating. In other words, as you divide a number by another number, you continue to get numbers they don't repeat and that never terminate. Examples, the most famous example, of course, is the number pi, the natural number e, the square root of a number like 2 or 3. Those are called irrational numbers because we cannot find the exact value of those numbers. That's really the point. You cannot find the exact value. So when you look at a number line like this, you can find numbers such as 0 and 1 and 2 or negative 1 or even numbers such as 1.5 or numbers as 0 0.5, or numbers such as 5 halves. We can find those numbers because those are exact points on the number line. Irrational numbers, we know they're there somewhere. For example, pi is 3.14159 and continue on like that. So we know that the number pi is somewhere in this neighborhood, but we can't find the exact spot of the number pi. Although we do know it is actually on the number line somewhere. So when we talk about irrational numbers, those are simply numbers that we know they're on the number line, we just don't know the exact spot. For example, the square root of 2 is equal to 1.40, and continue on like that, but we can never find the exact set of decimals out to infinity. They're not repeating, and they're not terminating. So we don't know exactly where that number is. It's somewhere in this neighborhood. It's, we know it's on the number line. We just don't know exactly the spot where it is on the number line. So those are called the irrational numbers. Now when we combine all the rational numbers, which can be written in the form a over b, here are the examples, and we add up all the irrational numbers, we know they're on the number line, we just can't find the exact spot, we combine them all together, those are considered the real numbers. The real numbers are all the rational numbers and all the irrational numbers combined. There are all the numbers on the number line. Hmm, are the numbers that are not on the number line? The answer is yes but those are not real numbers. Those are what we call imaginary numbers. They're not on the number line. For example, this number right here, it exists, but it's not real. In mathematics, it exists. In the real world, it doesn't. Does it have use? Yes, it does. And that's why in mathematics, we do talk about imaginary numbers. And the prime example of that is the square root of negative 1. We call the square root of negative 1 the number i. It doesn't really exist, there's no such thing as the square root of a negative number, but we do have use for that in mathematics. 
or the square root of negative 2, or the square root of any negative number. And so we write imaginary numbers as a sum of a real part and an imaginary part. The imaginary part is some number multiplied times i, where i is the square root of negative 1. So a plus bi is what we call an imaginary number. This is the real part of the number, that's the imaginary part of the number. Another example is 3 minus 5i. 3 is the real part, minus 5i is the imaginary part. So imaginary numbers are simply numbers where we have the number i multiplied times some number. It's not a number line, but we do have use for it in mathematics, so we'll use that extensively later on. But what we need to know now is all the various types of number sets. And once you know what these are, then it's a lot easier to look at your textbook and know what they're talking about when these are mentioned. And that's what they are.